Hello everybody, it's Chris and I'm back again. Like, subscribe and share it with your friends. I'm going to start off this video by first apologizing on how long it took me to put out this video for my last. My video card crashed. Basically, I had to reconfigure my computer a little bit to just get it good enough that I can make videos again. It's not fully back to where I want it to be, but it's right now it's it is what it is. So it's good enough to at least I can make a video for you guys. So I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the Great Fire of Muramushi that happened in 1825. This year is the Muramushi River and its tributaries and I'm assuming these uh, dark spots here on this map are what they're going to have us believe are the, place, the areas that were affected by this great fire. But I'm going to show you that this fire was way more devastating than what they are showing you here. On that note, let's get into it. So we're over here at Maine Genealogy Society. Everything's going to be linked up in the description if you want to do your own further research into it. Miramichi is the name of a city, river, and an area in northern New Brunswick. In 1825, the town was called Newcastle, but they switched the name up, right? So I'm not going to read the whole thing. We're just going to touch on some notes. The thin acidic soil of the Miramichi area are not conductive to agriculture. Thus, the lumber industry and Atlantic salmon fisheries were the region's mainstay in the late 1700s and early 1800s. So we used to have a great forest here, basically, right? But they used to take a lot of our trees because they were straight and tall. They used to send them over to make mass in the British Navy, right? So we just had these really big trees that were just really good for mass building, right? To make these big boats. So they're going to give you the same old story here where it was a warm, dry summer, but they're going to tell you this one had no rain fell from July to October 8th. I don't know how that happens on a city on the ocean, but especially on the East Coast in the Maritimes, like we're in St. John here and, and <laughs> we've had one or two sunny days and maybe a week and a half. I don't know how that happens, <laughs> but anyways... While the land in the Miramichi region was not suitable for large-scale farming, almost every family had a garden, and their crops were generally good that year, although a lack of rain meant smaller vegetables than normal. So basically, everybody in that region seemed like they were, everybody had their own garden. They seemed like they were a lot more self-sufficient. They didn't depend on the government. They were just growing all their own crops, and they didn't depend on the government whatsoever. In autumn, the leaves fell and dried up and basically become like kindling for this fire. Apparently, we had the spruce budworm <laughs> and uh, they attacked all the tree and they, a lot of the trees died and it was big infestation or something. Yeah, we're going to just blame it on the worms. Why not, you know? I'll keep going down here. Like usual for every one of these great fires, nobody knows the cause of the fire. The forest was quickly ablaze, and the flames moved forward in the wind at an estimated one mile per minute. What? That's 60 miles per hour. The telegraph, the telephone, and two-way radio had not been invented. So there was no way of warning anybody about the impending danger that was coming up on them. But a mile per minute nobody could outrun this fire like if you weren't near a river you were gone like <laughs> that is a quick moving fire like this is like one of the fastest fires ever like wow right so you can uh, keep reading here if you want um yep but i'm gonna jump down here at one point the wall of advancing flames was believed to be 15 miles wide and advancing at one mile per minute that is incredible. Like, you can't outrun this. The fastest mile ever ran by a human is three minutes and 40-something seconds. Like, you couldn't outrun this fire. And you're no way you're keeping that pace up. If you weren't near a river, you were gone. Like, there was no way you were going to survive this fire. Like, this is 
wooden ships were even catching on fire going across and they were catching the next side on fire like the spreading the fire to the other side and i'm sure if it, the winds were this bad and it was moving that fast that the the sparks and all that debris and ash and stuff would be spreading the fire all over the place too right this is incredible like if this happened today it would be absolutely devastating like talks here about how people tried to get into the river and tried to bring their animals and most of the domesticated animals were scared and confused and wouldn't go into the water and most of them died and they say that on the other hand all the wild animals had no such fear and jumped right in and had to do what they had to do to to survive so they say that the humans were in the river and they share, were sharing it with all the wildlife and everything just to just to be safe from the, the flames yeah there was even a story of a bear like chilling beside a bunch of cows in the river and he just after it was all done, said and done, he just sauntered off back into the wilderness after the flames had moved on. Yeah, even the bears left the other creatures alone. Because they were all in the river, and it was like 140 degrees uh, or higher was the fire. I'm sure it was probably a lot higher than that. At least 10 people drowned. The only way to survive was to get into the river. A lot of people probably caught hypothermia after coming out of the river afterwards. Those who were not near a river were not so fortunate. Every town lost a lot of people and the large lost more. They didn't let the people out of the jails and they burned. Basically these guys actually the the jail was all made of stone so they basically like burned like an oven burned. Ugh, that's cocked. What a way to go. New Brunswick was in the middle of a typhoid typhoid fever epidemic at the time. So many people were sick in bed and they couldn't even get out of bed and they just died right in their homes. Couldn't get out of bed to the river to get out of the way, right? So during the flames, the winds reached hurricane force 70 miles an hour or more. It was October, so the air was cold, now superheated. Once people... Once the wet people came out of the rivers, they basically were right into freezing temperatures that night. A lot of people in their wet clothes had to either stand near the the burning buildings or burning trees just to keep warm that night. Like the ones that were kind of left burning as this crazy wall of fire that just torched most of New Brunswick. The fire was felt in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. There was boats being affected on the Northumberland Strait between New Brunswick and Prince. Edward Island. They reported heavy ashes fallen and cinders caused the sea to hiss and boil while the smoke on his deck was so heavy and thick as it affected both his sight and hearing. So the mainstream tally is that this fire burnt down one-fifth of the province of New Brunswick. Boom. Gone. Right? At this point, it was 1825. There wasn't very many towns and cities all over the place, but I'm sure there was probably a lot of indigenous people in the forest that uh, are very much un- unaccounted for. But they say the loss of human lives was 300 people, but it's a lot more than that. Yeah, we lost 600 buildings. So you lose 600 buildings, you would expect that you'd probably lose more than 300 people. I don't know, uh, especially during a typhoid ep- epidemic, but who knows. So yeah, they say that day that that the fire burned so crazy and that the the ashes were so far spread that ashes landed in many far off areas like Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, and even as far away as Bermuda. Blew that ash pretty far away, man. In all, the fire destroyed more than 500 buildings. An exact count was never made. So yeah, right there you go. They, who knows how much it burnt down also destroyed millions of acres we'll find out exactly how well not exactly how many millions but we'll find out an approximate amount but who knows exactly how many millions of acres were lost in this this fire right hundred the hun sorry of hundreds who perished in the fire their bodies were mostly buried where they were found there almost no tombstones for the people who died in the fire as local tombstone carters either overwhelmed with work or perhaps perished in the flames. So yeah, these people basically, all these bodies that they found were just buried like where they were found. So who knows how many num- thousands of people died in them. Also, don't go digging in Miramichi. <laughs> 
Entire towns were destroyed. Some of them were rebuilt as new towns in different locations that had escaped the flames and provided better soil, including new towns Campbellton, Dalhousie, Belladune, and the southern Gaspé coast. They basically moved town. They rebuilt towns in different locations. And then they tell us here, they try and throw some shade on it and say, well, a large fire broke out in Fredericton that day. On the same day, believe that the two fires were not connected. But pretty much one third of Fredericton burned down that day. But we're going to see what really happened. So basically, if you go to pretty much any any website that you search about the Miramichi fire, you're pretty much going to see that the Miramichi region burnt down. And that it wasn't, you know, it wasn't all that, that bad. It was just, you know, it was a couple million of acres. But, you know, it, it, it was just the Miramichi region, right? Well, that's not exactly true. I found this PDF called The International Nature of the Miramichi Fire. It gets in it gets into it. We'll just start off here by saying the the fire that swept across New Brunswick and Maine on October seventh is remembered as one of the largest and most devastating ones in recorded history and the first great fire of North American settlement. Yet the name, the Miramichi Fire, has been understood almost exclusively in local terms. Historical accounts written in the U.S. or Canada even tend to ignore the blaze that that burned on the other side of the border. When the smoke cleared, the true scale of the blaze became known. Early reports estimated the fire burned across 15,500 square kilometers. That's 6,000 miles, one-fifth of the pro- of the entire province. And virtually every single account over the following generations seconded this. 4,000 square kilometers, that's 1,300 square miles also burned in neighboring Maine making this what is still the most extensive fire in the state's history so that is a mouthful right there he gave us 15,500 and 4,000 right so this is this guy's estimate so that was 19,500 square kilometers that put into acres is 4,818,554.9 acres. That is one huge fire, right? That is a crazy, crazy fire. Back here it says, certainly it was the best known forest fire until the Pastigo fire burned across Wisconsin in 1871. So it was pretty well known for a while until the Pastigo fire and then it burned Chicago down. And you know, that's a pretty well known fire. Everyone knows about that, right? So, but this one, the big one before it. And it says here that used it in a debate bait or something he put forth the theory of forest spontaneous regeneration after fire he used the example of this fire that had swept the pine woods of maine and new brunswick and etc i guess and left birches in their place so we had completely different trees they're like literally terraforming this place completely burning out one crop and bringing in another the Miramichi region was largely unpopulated by Europeans until the beginning of the 18th century when Great Britain cut off Baltic timber during the Napoleonic War, turned to its North American colonies to meet its need. Right, so they basically came in in the early 1800s and burned everybody and everything out of the place and got rid of the everything and it's almost kind of obvious. <laughs> right? Like, they just kind of changed everything, killed everybody off. So, if you watched my very first video, I introduced everybody to St. John, New Brunswick. I uh, scrolled down here, I talked a little bit about all this stuff here. I went to the St. John Shield. I kind of jokingly said, like, oh, look, they went, they took very large trees, and we went all the way down to these little trees, and we had big animals, and then they have now little animals. We used to have big fish, and we have now little fish. It kind of seems like that actually might have been a lot more accurate 
somewhat of a joke than I thought when I made it at the time, right? <laughs> With this whole situation that we're finding out in this Miramichi fire. Alright, so now we're over here at this, some random firehouse website here. They're talking about a crazy fire that happened in 1947. They actually kind of just quickly mention as large uh, and destructive as these fires were, the largest forest fire was the so-called Miramichi Fire of October 7th, 1825, which burned an amazing 832 acres of forest. This is according to the Maine Forest uh, Commissioner's Report of 1947. They're saying that 800,000 acres of forest got burnt up which is pretty close to what this guy was saying with his number. So these numbers can get pretty high. So we're going to jump over here and see a list of fires, that great fires that have happened all over the place, right? We're going to go not look at the mine one. We're just going to scroll down here to the forest fires. Where does it start? 1871 in the Great Fire of Michigan. They uh, don't even mention the, the Great Miramichi Fire. We're going to go to the list of fires in Canada, right? So we got here, boom, the very first one, right, is, is, our, is, our, is our boy here that we're looking at, uh, 1825, right? So they say 300 people died, and they gave an estimate from 2.5 million to 4.9 million acres. So if we're going to put that in perspective, because everybody's, you know, up on the great fires that just happened, so we're just going to kind of scroll down here, and we're going to take a look at these totals here of all these great fires right we're just looking the chinchaga fire was pretty pretty devastating there too like well they all fight all these fires are devastating but i mean the northwest territory fire that one was really bad It ranks right up there with one of our greatest fires. So I th believe that there's a lot more that died than just that. We're jumping over to this here website here, gendisaster.com. Uh, I think generation disaster or something, I don't know. But um, they talk basically, give you the same jargon about this thing. They say that uh, at one point the fire was uh, 25 miles wide at one point. This quote here, um, it is most melancholy to think that some thousands of persons had perished in the flames in different parts of the wood. So that's thousands of people are perishing in whole different parts of the wood. The whole appears to be even done with the rapidity of lightning. Only two or three persons have saved their books. Uh, from what I have learned, six or seven hundred houses have burned. So that's a pretty accurate number. Like, well, I mean, as far as the mainstream stories are concerned. And in them, many inhabitants. Uh, seven bodies were found in one ruin and 26 in another. Take it all together from the written and verbal accounts. It is one of the most heart-rendering tales I have ever heard. The, the sufferings at Fredericton are great. And in a less degree, by last accounts, the fire in the woods was still burning. And we fear further distress will be experienced. <laughs> so this fire is still going on well, when this guy was given this quote or writing this thing down, right? But just wanted to say that, you know, there was thousands of people that died. There wasn't just 300 or 106. There was thousands of people that died. And if you want, we'll jump over here to the Miramichi website on Wikipedia. And they talk about the fire. It came known as a massive forest fire complex that devastated forest communities throughout northern New Brunswick. It ranks among the three largest forest fires ever recorded in North America. About a third of the homes in Fredericton were destroyed, but the main devastation was 100 miles, 160 kilometers, to the northeast commencing from Baz Karakwa. Google Maps here. So the Karakwa is up here. Right, the, the Bay of Karakwa, Baz Karakwa. And so they're saying that the fire burned here. The Miramichi is where the river starts and it comes all the way down this way, right? So fire burned from there to the Miramichi, to Fredericton, right, into Maine. And it burned an incredible amount in Maine as well. 900,000 acres in Maine. So it burned all the way up 
you know, one fifth of the province. It burned all the way across. But for the people who watched my last video, guess where this place is situated? On the Acadian Peninsula. So the fire started on the Acadian Peninsula. Who were they trying to get out of New Brunswick here? The Acadians. Could they still be? Could this be part of their expulsion? Is that they just burn them all the way down? As f whatever was left, they just burned them all out. It's real interesting when it gets when you get into it, right? It's like and they're killing all the the Acadians. So, but we know who the real Acadians are. They're melanated people, not the not the Acadians that you really see today. And they got expelled down to Louisiana and became the Cajuns. So yeah, and basically in conclusion, the Great Fire of Miramichi was a lot more devastating than what they let on. It burned an incredible amount of New Brunswick and a whole bunch of Maine. I just wanted to let everybody know that this, if you're talking about the expulsion of the uh, Acadians, this very well could be the final straw when the British finally moved in. I'm going to bring you over to this website here, Saltscapes, celebrating Canada's East Coast together. They talk about the Great Fire of Miramichi. They have some interesting facts that we're just going to go over, and they also pretty much say a lot of the same stuff that every all the other websites say. I just want to point a couple little notes from this one, this website too. They start off here, how it was hot and dry and all that, but by about noon, the air became thick and pale, a pale sticky mist, lightly tinged with purple, emerged from the forest and settled over it. They are basically saying that the fire, the smoke from that fire started, they could see it about noon was first recorded. So it was probably burning before then, a few, a couple few hours before then, right? So then we come down here by 9 p.m., a succession of loud and appalling roars thundered through the woods. Suddenly, flames raced along the north bank of Miramichi and into Newcastle and Douglastown. Within three minutes, most of Newcastle's buildings were on fire. So, imagine you're doing whatever you're doing at 9 p.m. You're watching YouTube, you're reading your book, drinking tea, whatever you're thinking about doing. In maybe, you know, you're in a town of, let's say, 260 houses, right? You're just hanging out. And within three minutes, most of that town is on fire raged beyond Newcastle, jumping the Miramichi River, sometimes from ship to ship, setting them on fire and burning three. At Douglastown, the flames burned 64 of the town's 70 buildings. On the south side of the river, it destroyed villages such as Bushville, Nepan, and Black River, where more people perished. When the fire finally burned itself out a day and a half later, like this burned for a day and a half across the province of New Brunswick and into the state of Maine. This is a crazy fire. The Miramichi region was devastated. It destroyed about one-fifth of New Brunswick's forest. So I think there's probably a little bit more, but we'll go with one-fifth. Yeah, so finally, down here it says, To put the Miramichi fire into perspective, the forest fire that ravished British Columbia in August and September of 2003 burned approximately 200,000 hectares. By comparison, the New Brunswick fire of 1825 is estimated to have burned more than eight times as much, perhaps 1,620,000 hectares, making it the largest fire recorded in the maritime and the biggest wildfire ever identified in North America. You want a little bit more perspective? Everybody's all up on the Fort McMurray fire. How much did the Fort McMurray fire burn? So we're looking at here. One and a half million acres. 590 hectares. The California fires, the new ones. The 2018 California fires. One of the most destructive fires. Well, all that. One of the most destructive fires and all that. Uh, that burned almost 2 million acres. Not even 800,000 hectares. This fire was huge. It was huge and it moved fast and it was just devastating. And if it was this area was more populated, it would have been a lot more people killed. 
and I'm sure there was a lot more people that they're not telling us. This is basically where they're saying it burned from, the Bay of uh, Caracua, basically right down the river to Fredericton, and then basically probably burned all the way over into Maine here, somewhere in this area maybe. But it's six hours if you're going to drive it, moving in pretty good click. But man, that's far. It's Let's see, if you're going to drive it, it's 370 miles. This fire just swept right across here, all the way from the Acadian Peninsula, all the way across all this forest here, just right down down into Maine, somewhere down in here. What devastation. Just wanted to tell you how devastating this fire was and that they basically burned out the Acadians. A lot more indigenous people were probably burned out. But yeah, this was um, one devastating fire. I hope all is well with everybody and much love. Have a good one.